Hello there, my fellow loyal brothers, and welcome back to one of my favorite series from Warhammer 40k lore on my channel. That series is none other than the Space Marine Armory, where we talk about the weapons, the vehicles, and very soon the ships used by loyalist Space Marines. Today's topic is actually a bit surprising, since it is very common in 40k, but somehow we never got to talk about it until today. Ladies and gentlemen, these are the Drop Pods. And while there are some variants on the Drop Pod from Chaos Worshippers and even Xenos, today we're gonna just talk about the Imperial ones. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Adeptus Astartes have made use of the Drop Pod since the very beginning of the Great Crusade, when they were still in the form of the Space Marine Legions. These spacecraft, if you can actually call them that, would quickly rain down forces comprised of hundreds or even thousands of Astartes, and they were used to quickly bring a world into Imperial compliance. They were deployed by both sides in the great interstellar war known as the Horus Heresy, when thousands of drop pods brought both traitors and loyalists down into battle against each other. Even back then, drop pod assaults were the preferred method of planetary insertion for several of the legions, including the World Eaters and the Space Wolves. The drop pods are still used today by most of the traitor legions, even after 10,000 years, but many heretic Astartes warbands now favor the use of the so-called Dreadclaw drop pod, as it is more advanced than the standard pattern drop pod. They are the ultimate weapon of terror and surprise. When a drop pod lands directly in the middle of the enemy line or formation, and its occupants start disembarking and wreaking havoc. When that happens, there is little escape for the enemy. They are fired with colossal acceleration from an orbiting strike cruiser or battle barge. After launch, it screams through the planet's atmosphere with oversized rocket thrusters, boosting it even further beyond terminal velocity. Even the most advanced air defense systems have problems locking onto a drop pod, traveling at over 12,000 kilometers an hour. At these velocities, it only takes a matter of minutes, or even seconds, for a drop pod to reach its destination as it plummets through the atmosphere, only firing its retro thrusters at the last possible moment before making a devastating impact on the surface with enough force to crush almost any structure. Drop pod assaults are fraught with peril, as the craft possesses few defenses against actual enemy anti-aircraft fire, or other aircraft or debris present in the air while they are plummeting downwards at full speed. Additionally, the passengers must lend their trust in the guidance systems of the machine spirit, to properly and safely deliver them to their destination. During the descent, it is common for the Space Marines to give voice to prayers to the Emperor and hymns of vengeance, stealing themselves before the danger of a violent orbital entry, and preparing themselves for the battle ahead. There are very few enemies that can withstand the tactic, as the Space Marines will land in and among places that only moments before were considered safe. After the drop pod is used, it will remain on the battlefield, until it can be safely retrieved by a chapter tech marine, usually via a Thunderhawk transporter. As you might guess, there are many variants of the drop pod, from smaller, single-man versions, to drop pods capable of delivering even a dreadnought into battle. So, the main variants of them used by the Imperium are... The Standard Drop Pod This one is, just like the name says, the standard pattern of Adeptus Astartes drop pod, and it is capable of carrying up to 12 space marines into combat. They are launched from a vessel in low orbit towards the drop zone, usually in the midst of or near a battlefield. Once launched, a drop pod plummets through the atmosphere until its retro rockets fire to slow the descent. The machine spirit on board guides the drop pod to its destination, and can even receive further commands from the pod's mothership. Although the drop pod becomes immobile after having landed on a planetary surface, it can later be recovered and reused. These spacecraft are capable of being armed with a single storm bolter or Deathwind missile launcher, capable of providing covering fire for disembarking Astartes. 
During the Great Crusade and Horus Heresy, the dropouts were equipped with a set of twin-linked bolters. Although it is not standard, the dropouts can be modified to carry Space Marines in Terminator armor. Although this practice is rarely utilized due to the Terminator's ability to teleport directly into battle. When a dropout is modified to carry Space Marines in Terminator armor, two standard size restraints must be replaced by a single large restraint, due to the sheer bulk of Terminator armor. Thus, instead of 12 Space Marines, it can carry 6 Terminators. The Thunderfire Drop Pod This one is a standard pattern drop pod with most of the internal seating removed, so that the craft is capable of carrying a single Thunderfire cannon and its crew into battle to provide heavy support for the occupants of other drop pods in a single assault. This is used because the drop pods are not big enough to deliver actual vehicles into combat from orbit. The Rapier Drop Pod this is pretty much like the Thunderfire drop pod, except instead of a Thunderfire cannon, it carries a rapier mobile weapon platform. These were also very commonly used during the Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy by all the Space Marine Legions. The Squad drop pod This is a rather bizarre variant of the standard drop pod, as instead of 12, this one carries a squad of 10 Space Marines in battle. Just like the standard variant, it is also capable of being armed with a single storm bolter or missile launcher, which can provide covering fire for the disembarking Astartes. The Combat Squad Drop Pod This one is an even smaller variant than the Squad one, as it can carry only 5 Astartes into battle, or a so-called Demi Squad. This one, on the other hand, is often used to insert forces behind enemy lines to conduct covert operations against the enemy. And finally, the smallest one, the single man drop pod. These ones are very small, and they are capable of carrying only one person to the battlefield. These are usually used to deliver important Astartes officers like captains or librarians to a planet's surface. They can also deliver needed cargo such as special war gear and even servitors if required. The Dreadnought Drop Pod The Dreadnought Drop Pod was developed alongside the more common Legion Drop Pod in general service at the time of the Great Crusade. Specifically designed Dreadnought Drop Pods, such as the Lucius Pattern Heavy Drop Pod, were somewhat larger than the standard Drop Pods of the Legionis Astartes and had a more powerful engine, allowing for a dangerously meteoric descent onto the battlefield. This served to protect the cargo during approach, and allowed it to strike with phenomenal speed. Even today, these are highly valued by many chapters. This pattern is the largest known dropout variant used by the Astartes, and it is capable of delivering one Dreadnought into combat. While it is bigger than the standard variant, it also lacks any and all internal non-essential equipment, such as restraints, weapon holders, and more. It uses three or four large external door ramps, as opposed to the smaller ones used on other types of drop pod. They are capable of delivering both Contemptor Pattern Dreadnoughts and the Castroferrum Pattern Mark IV and Mark V's onto the battlefield. The Deathstorm Drop Pod These things were first conceived and prototyped by the Raven Guard Legion in the Great Crusade who sought to augment the firepower of their precision orbital assaults. The preference of the Raven Guard for such surgical strike tactics would, upon occasion, leave them at a disadvantage. This was the case of both protracted engagements and in assaulting very heavily fortified targets where heavy units like Legion tanks and artillery could not be used. The solution of the Raven Guard spoke much to their own nature and preferred tactics a weapon that can strike down with merciless swiftness and expand its force in a lethal fury, leaving little need for prolonged endurance. Thus, the Deathstorm Drop Pod is a variant of the standard Drop Pod, which carries heavy weaponry instead of Space Marines. Built around a standard chassis, the Deathstorm pattern utilizes heavy weapons which are slaved to a targeting cogitator, and once the assault ramps are open, the weapons will fire on anything outside of the spacecraft. 
Unfortunately, these weapons do not possess auto-targeting capability and will fire indiscriminately at the area around them until all ammunition is expended. Although by the time this happens, the dropouts carrying the Space Marines themselves will have landed and started disgorging Astartes onto the battlefield to face any possible enemies that survive the onslaught of the Deathstorm drop pods. In terms of capacity, the Deathstorm drop pod can be equipped with either 5 assault cannons or 5 whirlwind missile launchers, one of these positioned at each of the spacecraft's assault ramps. Finally, the least glorious drop pod, if you will, the supply drop pod. Supply drop pods can be delivered to Space Marine forces operating behind enemy lines, or otherwise away from an area where easy supply is possible. Supply drop pods can be used to deliver almost anything needed by a squad, including food, weapons, ammunition, and even specialist war gear like jump packs. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the ubiquitous Astartes drop pods for today. Definitely a staple of Space Marine armories everywhere, and a very widely used piece of war gear, probably on par with the Rhino chassis itself. I'm also sorry I didn't get to talk about them sooner, but here we are. Is the drop pod among your favorite Astartes vehicles slash weapons? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do feel free to share any thoughts, opinions or questions on them, if you want, in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thanks a lot for watching and have an awesome and healthy day. The Emperor Protects. <laughs>